Here with me in the European Parliament in Brussels is Olga Stechnalova. Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you very much for inviting me again. <laughs> it's um, a very, very important subject for both of us, both our countries, the double standard. You've had a report that was voted in the European Parliament. What's uh, going to happen next after this report was voted? I must say that I was very happy with the result of the report uh, because uh, it's after seven years uh, the European Parliament has its uh, very concrete stand on the, on the matter and it's very important also for the message when it comes to the uh, legislation which is right now on the table. We were waiting for the will of the Parliament to say what kind of direction the legislation should take place. And uh, the legislation which is on the table is the amending of the Unfair Commercial Practice Directive, um, which has part which also tackles the dual quality. And now the discussion is whether we should have the dual quality as uh, in fact, um, some kind of a legitimate practice uh, which can be explained by many different uh, the so-called legitimate reasons what the producers sometimes tell us uh, and uh, whether and that's the other option and the parliament voted for this one is whether to uh, the double quality uh, should be banned as such. Uh, in the legislation, it means that it would be uh, put uh, on the annex of the uh, unfair commercial practices that are listed, listed there. So this is right now the work of the parliament and also of the member states. So I will somewhat use this opportunity to also call on the citizens to ask their ministries that will be responsible for this piece of legislation uh, to really stand for their citizens to ban the dual quality. The member states should will have a, a period of time to, uh, to adapt this legislation. Uh, do you know this uh, period is of uh, how many months? Uh, right now we are in a process where the legislation should be, um, I would say, adapted um, in the member states and the council mm -hmm. and in the parliament as such. I don't think that it's quite possible to have this agreement between the Parliament and the Council before the elections, but if we succeed to have it done, let's say, uh, within the next year, then usually when it's a directive, it's two years for the member states to, to adapt the legislation into their uh, national, national law system. So the citizens should put pressure in the next two years to the governments uh, in order to to have this uh, legislation in their country applicable, uh, let's say. What will happen after uh, this? It is important to, to uh, look exactly at, uh, at this legislation and to understand what will actually change in the member states. I must say that we are not that far. I know that everybody is so frustrated. It takes so long, but we are really battling about every word because every word can be interpreted in a, in a different way. What I'm asking for is that the legislation, which will be the outcome of our work in the Council of the Member States and in the European Parliament, is first of all applicable uh, by the enforcement authorities. That when the dual quality occurs, then it can be tackled and it can be enforced uh, by the competent authorities. That's, that's all. I'm always saying that we are not prescribing the, the uh, producers what should, they, what should they do, but they should clearly inform the, the, the consumers what these products are and if they are different, why are they, uh, why are they different? Because and of taste, they've told us. Yeah, that's exactly what should not happen and what should not be the back door in the, in the legislation. So this is the battle we are, we are actually uh, doing now when discussing the concrete piece of legislation that unfair commercial practice uh, practice directive. So we are not that far as I would wish, but the stand of the European Parliament in their report is very clear that we want to uh, ban the double quality as, uh, as such. And then if we succeed in the concrete legislation as well, then for the, uh, for the producers and also for the retailers, it's very clear um, uh, message. Don't do it. And if you do, then there is a law which uh, also can be applicable to your practice. Let's explain a little bit how big were the differences between products in uh, the Eastern European countries like ours and the rest. 
how big were the differences? Because I know you've made a lot of tests in your country. Um, you know these differences are, let's say, about the composition when it comes to the raw materials. Uh, very known example is about, so let's say, the meat cans, sometimes so with the pork meat, sometimes with something what is rest of, let's say, the poultry, the mechanical separated um, stuff. Well, can we... Let, the garbage, let's say. Yeah. The garbage, um, somehow. You know, so it's also about the about the portion of the of the raw materials in different uh, in in different products, uh, less quality materials, and so and so on. I mean, there are whatever product you can you can take, you can uh, really really see. I'm not c complaining or blaming that. Uh, if there are really indeed some, uh, some, some differences when it comes to the preferences of the, of the consumers, but they have to be very clearly mar uh, marketed and should be very clear to the consumer on the first sight. And they should not be marketed as seemingly identical products. I mean, that's the problem that we are, we are basically talking about. What the Parliament was for a long time asking uh, uh, the Commission to perform pan-European tests. This is happening actually right now, although I have some reservation when it comes to the methodology, I have some reservations when it comes to the uh, sampling of the, of the products. Uh, the results should be published by the end of the year, at least that's what the European Commission has promised, but we are, we are really much, far, uh, much further than, than that because the tests that were performed in more than 10 uh, European countries, uh, they are quite clear that this practice uh, is, uh, is just happening. Did they create the mechanism in order to, uh, to uh, look for uh, every country uh, in, in particular? Um, the, European, the European Commission asked uh, different member states to take part uh, in this testing. I'm uh, quite disappointed that uh, by far not, con not all the countries has, have participated. And I'm quite uh, disappointed that especially those where the dual quality was uh, uh, actually proven that, uh, that it's happening. So for me, uh, this is a disappointment because I, I, I think that once we are talking about pan-European testing, all the member states uh, should, uh, should take part of it. Why didn't they take part of, uh, of uh, this mechanism, of the testing mechanism? Unfortunately, that's not a question uh, that I can, uh, I can answer. I mean, you should probably ask those, uh, those countries that are not, uh, not participating. But for me, this is uh, really something which I can wonder as well why. Why they don't want to... Uh, be part of the testing and to really see how the internal market um, looks like and uh, if it really works uh, for all the citizens the same way. Is it enough this new, new piece of legislation to, to ban uh, the double standard? Is it enough what you've done here in the European Parliament or do you feel because I know you've been working on this a lot, do you feel that uh, it's still some, uh, something missing? I think that the legislation is very important part of uh, part of it because we have to have uh, uh, some kind of a mean um, that if the uh, producers are really continuing to do this practice that uh, it's uh, really enforceable I'm very much grateful uh, grateful for a public debate for shows like yours that we are really talking uh, about about this practice and I know that some of the producers are really already thinking about their practice also internally some have already already changed their recipes a uh, bit more or less publicity. Mm -hmm. It's their um, internal, let's say, um, um, strategy, how to, uh, how to tackle that. Um, we would like to see also to move this uh, question also to non-food products, not only, about, uh, not only about food. So that's maybe some task for the, the next step. Uh, okay. for, for, the, for the next step, so uh, I think everything comes together. Uh, there's not one sil uh, silver bullet uh, that would solve it all, but I think that we uh, moved much further than uh, some years ago when uh, this discussion has um, ever started. So in this first step, you cover all the, the food um, area, let's say, including baby food, because there was a, was, a, was a huge, huge and important debate. Uh, and next, 
uh, to be done is to uh, look at those um, uh, things that are not in the food area, like, uh, uh, for example, uh, cosmetics. cosmetics, right, uh, uh, shampoos, uh, things like this. Yes, indeed. Uh, did you make any tests in your country regarding this area? Um, uh, th there were only very small sampling, uh, really um, units of items. So uh, I cannot uh, cover this as uh, something which uh, has a broad evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something uh, ahead of us. I know that uh, um, uh, the European Commission uh, has actually mandated uh, for uh, next year also to look into the non-food uh, non products, which is very important. I think that it's rather um, the concrete experience of many uh, consumers and many of our citizens, uh, even for the non-food, when they buy it uh, uh, abroad. But uh, the evidence uh, which is uh, uh, done by um, different testings uh, each month is much less than uh, when it comes to food. Thank you so much for, uh, for your comments, for your presence and for the reports because uh, it's very important for uh, us, those who are living uh, in the uh, Eastern European uh, countries. Uh, let's hope that in the near future we'll have this piece of legislation in, the, um, in our state's legislation. Thank you very much uh, again, and uh, I would only repeat that also shows uh, like, uh, like yours uh, are fueling the public debate, which is very, very important and very helpful. Thank you. Th thank you so much. We will focus now on Romania.